call something out, make sure that you call out category and point and go fast. Come here, go ahead, click it. This one? Yes. First hand I see, reason Eddie Murphy was elected Congress. The name recognition? Yeah, it was. It was actually non Bosnian pumpkins. It was the name recognition. Go ahead, touch the house. Pick me a category. Y'all have it. Uh, articles for three? Articles for three, she says. List all you can. Click it. Gerrymandering. Oh, yeah. Y'all have it first. First hand I see has it next. Go ahead. Well, he was Massachusetts governor, right? And he he was the Massachusetts. Do you remember what his name was? Uh, I can remember. Or do you remember how they came up with the name well, Jerry Mandry? Like in the name of the like that? Elbridge Jerry was the Massachusetts governor, one, two, three. And when he was redistricting, he drew districts in the shape of a salamander, one, two, three. But it wasn't just salamander. What was the problem with him drawing these weird shapes? Do you remember? Because this is what makes it illegal. Five. I didn't remember. Four, <laughs> gerrymandering. Oh, come on, zoom in on Seth. He's making an awful face. Three, anybody? Two, what's the problem with gerrymandering? One, oh, it's gonna be a bad exam. Gerrymandering is when you draw districts that in fact are based on political party. So if you are Republican and you draw more districts that are Republican than Democrat, even if there are more Democrats in your state, you're cheating. And the article, the really good quote from the article, Barack had said, and I'll post this, it's the rigging elections article. Barack said it's really a bad system when the politicians are picking their voters rather than the voters picking their politicians. Do y'all remember the weird shaped district in Maryland? I had shown you that little map and a little bit with Governor Hogan. Oh. Okay, we'll stop there with gerrymandering. Go ahead, touch the house. You did give me the last correct answer. Pick one, non-Bosnian pumpkins. Uh, executive four. Executive four, she says. I need somebody to come up and draw. Oh, boy. <coughs> Pick, I need somebody to come up and draw. She's drawing. Okay. I need you to draw that. Got it? Got it? Don't, no words, nothing like that. One minute oh, on the 12. Yeah, you can go right there. Can you hold on my arm? With my teeth? No. It's just you with the rhyme. Can I hold on my arm? Ten seconds. Okay, looks like Gabriel's up here with the gentleman. Oh my. Now remember, your group can guess as much as you want. This is from the executive chapter. Why does he got four eyes? Well, it looks like the Halloween executive. <laughs> I can do the rest. I didn't need you to start. I'm like trying to emphasize this. <coughs> oh. You can draw arrows, not words. Okay. I got a one. Horns. Marcus is like, what the hell is that? Okay, ten seconds. It's really, oh my god. What? Flowers? Oh, I see. That's really not bad. Right? It's really not bad. Um, Three, two, one. Anything at all that you can give me. Wait, let me see this picture. Okay. Any other group you want to say anything of this from the executive chapter? First hand I see. What's the significance of makeup to the executive chapter? First hand I see. Oh, you, it's you. you and you then you're next. Go. That she was like giving like she uh, when the like, election that she had like she spent so much time like getting ready and all that. Is that what it is? Something like that. There was something like that, but but it's not what I'm looking for. Go. Wasn't it with Nixon where they were forcing them to Oh. Oh, it was Nixon. The ugly sweaters. One, two, three, four. Okay, who was running in this election? Any of y'all three? It was Nixon and Kennedy. It was Nixon and JFK. Okay, one, two, three, four. Nixon mm. and Kennedy were running for the presidency in 1960, and something happened for the first time. What? Uh, televised. Uh, the 
debate. Televised presidential debate. Uh, One, two, three, four. And, and and Nixon, why what was significant about makeup for Nixon? Because he was sick previously. He was really pale. He, like a dead, he, he like said a dead he would be gay. He was really yeah. pale. And they went to him and they said, Dick, you gotta put on some makeup. Did he? No, no. no. Why? Because he said he would look like a gay. They have control. <laughs> Yeah, he did think that they would. He did think that they would think he was gay. So, <laughs> so understand on this. Nixon refused to wear the makeup, and he projected awfully on television. What other problems did he have in that 1960? He looked at the teleprompter. He looked at the teleprompter five, four. Three. He, he looked at the teleprompter. Two. He wasn't look, I'm saying looking. that that's not right. One. Wait, no. Minus no. four. Three. Oh. 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 What did Nixon look at? Nasty. He did not look at the camera. I mean, Kennedy did. He just like he was just. Well, what was he looking at? We just talked about. It was like mon monitor. What's it called? The monitor. Uh, the. Five. Is that what it's called? Yeah. It's not called the Nixon looked at the camera. No. Nixon was looking. No, Kennedy looked at Minus four! Like <laughs> Minus four! Go, Nicola! He was looking at the uh, moderator! Oh. One, mm. two, three, four! Nixon was looking at the moderator, not at the camera. Kennedy was looking at the camera. So there was the camera issue, there was the makeup issue. What other appearance issues did he have? Five. He wore a very dark suit. Wore a very dark suit. Go ahead. That was contrasting against his pale face. While and Kennedy wore something lighter. He wore a dark suit against a very dark background, which just made him look worse since he wasn't wearing the makeup. Kennedy had a suit that stood apart. Kennedy, did he have to wear makeup? No. He didn't. Why? He went to California. He was tan. He was tan. Yeah, I asked this question, and people struggled with what white people look like when they come back from California. He was actually campaigning, and he had more of a tan to him. So Kennedy didn't have anything else you can think of. Suit, camera, makeup, because there were one or two more things. Five, four, three, two, one. He was sweating just like I am, and that didn't project well. He also had a really thick five o'clock shadow. Nixon didn't do so well. At the end of this, and it was one of the closest elections in American history, of course, Kennedy won. When they went back and researched this, Nicola's group, what did they find different between the people that watched it and the people that listened? They found that more people agreed with Nixon's points when they listened to the radio, while more people uh, like, liked Kennedy more when they actually saw the debate on TV. The argument is, and if you're listening on the radio, what really is the bottom line thing that you're listening to? Your point. Their points, their ideas. Nixon had better ideas because the ideas are what people focused on on the radio, and the people that listened to it on the radio thought that Nixon won. On TV, it wasn't so much about the ideas, but it was about the sizzle versus the substance, the appearance. Nixon always felt like he got cheated, and they make a big deal to this day. The idea is, is that you don't win a presidency because of the debates. But like Nixon, you could lose it because of the debates. Pick me, uh, click it if you would. Pick me a category. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20. 12 for the ugly sweaters. 3 for the non-Bosnian pumpkins. And the gingerbread have not arrived. <laughs> Go ahead. Pick me a category. Um, we'll do executive five points. Executives for five. <laughs> click it. You have it first. First hand I see second. What is the 25th Amendment? Five. First hand I see's got it next. Four. Oh, this is a big one if you have not gotten points yet. Three. Go ahead, Alan. You have it. There are four sections. Five, four, three, two, one, go. So the first section says that Vice President... Zoom in because her sister's going to see this video. Oh, my God. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, vice President becomes President if something happens to... Yeah, the first section is pretty much non-confrontational, non really, non-controversial. <laughs> if, if something happens to the President, the Vice President takes over. What about Section 2? Because it starts to change now. Uh, if the Vice President becomes President, Vice President will choose a new Vice President with approval from both houses. Okay, yeah, you, you're all over the place in that. If the Vice President becomes President, then they're going to select a new Vice President that's going to be confirmed by the House and the Senate. One thing on this is, this is the only time where the House and the Senate are required to approve. Um, now let me come back to you. Why did they put this in? Because I did talk about this specific when we were going over it. Five, four, anybody in the group? Why would they add this? Three, not everybody at once. Two, 
Oh, this is going to be bad. One, other groups. Why did they add this? If you remember, there were several times where the vice president took over as president, and they weren't sure how to add a new vice president, and they would actually serve sometimes a few years and not have a vice president, and they would not add one until they ran for office again. Be careful with that. Um, I'll come back to you, since nobody else has given me an answer. What's section three? Um, Five. So if something happens Four. to the president, Three. And, then he needs to, and he needs to pass the power to the vice president, yeah. then he writes a letter to the House and Senate to declare it, or like to do that. The president, if the president finds himself unfit or unable to fulfill the obligations of the office, the president can write a letter to the leadership of the House and the leadership of the Senate, basically passing the office of the presidency on to the vice president. Can the president get it back? Yeah. Yes. yes. When? How? When he doesn't need to like pass, like when he isn't like unfit to need to pass. When the president submits a letter to the leadership of the House and the Senate that says I am, you know, capable again, then the president will automatically take over. Can you give me an example of a time when this has happened or when it could happen? You'll have it next, but you've got it now. Like when it could happen? Or when it did happen using this 25th. Five. Isn't something like death in the family an example? Like, like what do you mean? Like Four. If the president had someone close to them die and they feel like they're not fit emotionally to make decisions for the country that they need to pass. The I suppose that would work. I think I gave a specific example. I did say y'all were next. The President George W. Bush, when his daughter was kidnapped, was that the... George W. Bush's daughter was kidnapped. Yeah, that was the... <laughs> Michelle, help her, help her. Because what she said is right in spirit. No, get closer. I, I mean, you got to get closer. Right? Go, go, go ahead, Michelle. No, Bush. Just <laughs> <laughs> when Bush had a surgery and he uh, gave the power to the president, George W. actually did have a surgery. One, two, three, four, five. George W. did have a surgery. He thought it might be cancerous. You gave us examples of somebody, somebody, somebody's daughter. I did, and that was the example from the West Wing. That's why I was saying, in spirit, you're right. George W. Bush's daughter wasn't kidnapped, though. No. Something was happened like Something that. was happened like that, yeah. yes. Okay, anyway, so as I, as I wrap this up, understand on this. A, the surgery, and I think I mentioned to y'all, you know, if you've ever been under surgery, anesthesia and whatnot, and then you wake up, you're not quite right. You typically would do this. He turned it over to Dick Cheney, the vice president, and then they announce after the president has retaken the office that, in fact, this occurred. <clears throat> so they don't want anybody acting with funny business. Y'all now have control. What is section four? Five. Four. Three. Oh, be ready and hustle. Two. One. Anybody else? Section four. I'm going to head her hand first. They're mm -hmm. out, though. Because they already got it, you know, they, they lost control. <laughs> they lost control. <laughs> Go ahead, Amna. Uh, if Vice President can get majority of... Yeah, get close every time, because her sister's going to see this. Can you... Go ahead. Um, if Vice President can, can get majority of cabinet members to say that the President is not able to perform his job well, the Vice President will become President. And for the President to get his power back... Um... Let's start with the first part first. Understand on this, if the vice president and a majority of the cabinet say the president is not fit for duty, then they can put in writing to the House leadership and the Senate leadership this fact, and at that point the vice president takes over for the president. Now, the thing on this is it's never happened before. Can you give me an example of a time when it could? I can't. Anybody? <laughs> when it could? Oh, shame on you. There's going to be a bad test next week. I, I think I, yes. Oh, when the president's sick, right? You could argue um, that maybe you should give it up if you've got a medical issue uh, and, and you're not able to fulfill. I mean, there are a number of ways that this could go about. I'll give you a couple of points on that. Probably not the, the, you know, the best, but it's, it's never happened before. When can the president get it back? Because you started to stumble. Get close, Avi. Uh, when you can get the majority of cabinet secretaries and the vice president to agree. The vice president and the cabinet secretaries have to give it back. The president cannot take it back like the president can automatically in section three. The last part of this is really kind of controversial because it's never happened. Um, I think the example I gave you all in class was Air Force One. 
The Russians took over the plane. Um, they threatened the daughter and the first lady. They tried to get Harrison Ford, who was playing the president, to they, they tried to take the power away because he was thinking as a husband and a father, not as a president. And ultimately, the vice president must agree to do this because the vice president is the person to take over. And the vice president didn't agree to this in the movie. And at that point, it just it, it, it ended up stopping. Uh, it didn't happen. Um, Y'all gave me the last correct answer, Evelyn.